Hello everybody. So in this lab we're going to be introducing DEMs, which are digital elevation models, and we're going to walk through different ways to visualize elevation and um, kind of dig into some of the cursory secondary surfaces that we can create from elevation information, things like slope, hillshade, aspect. Um, but I really want you to kind of think about the difference between raster data and vector data this week and think about how attributes are stored um, and think about you know the different kind of uh, data qualities and properties that are different between raster data and vector data. Um, so first of all we're going to use a new set of tools in this lab so you need to go up to the geoprocessing, nope, the customize menu, customize um, extensions, and then you need to turn on the, in particular, Spatial Analyst extension, but while you're in here, you might as well just check all these boxes. Um, that If you don't do that, when you try and run some of these, error, or some of these um, tools on uh, raster data, you'll get an error saying you don't have the proper authority or the proper licenses. And just know that you do, you just have to go up to the Customize menu and turn them on. Um, okay, so this is an elevation model for part of the Bear River that's just west of Cache Valley. And uh, one of the first things I have you do in the lab is just to go into the properties and get familiar. So I just want to talk you through this really quick. In the source tab of the properties, you can see that it just lists a bunch of information about the raster. So remember, a raster is a matrix of cells, and it's telling you that this data set has around 8,300 columns, um, 6,800 rows, approximately. Um, what does that mean for the size? Well, the cell size is one by one. What are the units on that? It comes from the coordinate system. So if you scroll down a little bit, the spatial reference is the same thing as a coordinate system for a raster. Uh, North American datum of 1983 is the datum, and then UTM zone 12 is the projection, and the entire thing together is the coordinate system. We know that it's a projected coordinate system because it's got units of meters, um, this means that the angular lat long uh, coordinate system has been flattened to something Cartesian mm -hmm. on an XY grid, and we've got units of uh, meters that are linear. The degrees are the angle coming out from the center of the Earth that measures the angle from the equator, you know, north or south, it would be that angle. Um, but this has been replaced with a linear unit of meters. So this is historical information about the data, this is the, the current. Uh, cord or the current unit that relates to this coordinate system. So if our cell size is one by one, that's one meter by one meter. When we talk about resolution or describe resolution, we would say this is a one meter DEM. We don't uh, refer to it as an area, which in this case would be a one meter squared. Um, we don't do that. Resolution is just one um, cell length, either the X or the Y, they're square. So it's just going to be a one meter DEM. I'm going to ask this question many times from here to the end of the semester to try and drive that habit home of referring to a DEM as a five meter, a 10 meter, a one kilometer DEM, something like that. Okay, so um, the rest of these things, the uncompressed size of the grid, it's a, a format grid, it could be an image file, a grid file, uh, there are different options here. Source type generic, none of these things matter all that much. Uh, a 32-bit floating point pixel has to do with the amount of data, the size of the data that can be stored in any given cell. So if we were calculating something like um, slope, it's always going to be a positive number, so you wouldn't need it to be, um, we've got like 8 bits signed or unsigned are the different options in here. Floating point means it can store a decimal place, and 32 bit is just the size of the number that can be stored. Uh, let's see here, those aren't very interesting, not very interesting. The extent, so these are the north, south, east, west, um, well north, south, <laughs> uh, west, east coordinates for the minimum and maximum. So this would be saying for the top that it's 4,632,796 meters north of the equator is the uppermost extent of this data and the southernmost is 4,626,000 meters north of the equator. So that's what these are defining. The east and west has, is relative to the central meridian for a UTM zone, which has a false easting 
of 500,000. And so if these are all less than 500,000, they are west of the central meridian for UTM zone 12, if that makes sense. Hopefully it does. If not, give me a holler. Um, these don't, there's your false easting. None of those matter all that much. There's your datum that's implicit in your coordinate system. It's built in here. Um, and that's, that's pretty good. Another important thing, I think helpful thing to know is when you look at the source, um, it tells you that it's a raster. It also shows you the location of the data. Remember the data isn't in the map itself. The map just points to the location of the data. And so it's going to look for this file on the G drive. And then this is the string of folders that it's in. Notice I don't have any spaces in here at all. There, I replace spaces with underscores. This is going to become really important as we start working with rasters. Check your paths and make sure that your folders don't contain spaces. Uh, one out of four tools that you go to run will error out because you've got a space somewhere in the path. Uh, and then this also tells you the real name of the data. I can go up here and rename it, but this is kind of just a temporary name. Um, it doesn't change the, the name of the file itself. So if you go to rename your outputs up here to kind of make them make more sense, and then you forget what they're really called, which sometimes happens and you need to know, you can go in here and check what the real name of the data set is. Okay, so that's it. Um, the other thing that you really need to know to run this lab is that you're going to use the search window to find all the tools that I ask you to run. So whether it's Hillshade or Slope, you want to be looking for the Spatial Analyst set of tools. So Hillshade, Slope, um, we're going to be working with ArcScene this week to do some 3D representations of elevation models and show you how to float vector data over the elevation values and kind of get a three-dimensional look. We're going to do that in ArcScene. So instead of opening ArcMap, you'll go down to your search window and type in ArcScene and kind of open. It's, a, it's just a different interface um, that Esri has that runs in parallel here. Um, and then uh, we're going to learn to um, take the values that are associated with the rasters and derive secondary um, data sets from them and then learn how to summarize that data. So I, th I guess the last thing that's kind of handy to know, here's our elevation value and it's telling us this is our minimum value and this is our maximum value. And there's no way to know this except for through experience that um, elevation data is almost always in meters. It has nothing to do with the coordinate system. It's just kind of an industry standard. The only, only time you'll really find elevations in feet are if somebody goes through and calculates a conversion on this and multiplies every cell value by a conversion factor to uh, change this to feet. But you can just usually assume that uh, elevations are always in units of meters, but you need to have units in legends if you include elevation in a legend on a map. Uh, okay, so for the extent of this data set, the lowest area has uh, an elevation of 1292, and the highest has an elevation of 1707-ish. Um, and then I just want to point out that we can actually go in and read those from the map. If I zoom in here, remember these are one meter cells, so they're very small. Um, and this might be really hard to see uh, on your computer screen, but uh, let me see. I wanted to put a fancy color ramp on this to make it really exaggerated. We'll pick something with a ton of colors in it. Okay, so you can kind of see maybe a little bit more the um, the cells here. Oopsie, I wanted to zoom to layer. Right click, zoom to layer. And let's pick a spot that we see a ton of elevation change in. There we go. Now it's really easy to see the pixels. So each one of these should be one meter on a side, right? And so we can use the the ruler to just to get a cursory idea. So there you can see it's 0.99 meters because I didn't get it exactly. If you're ever curious about what the resolution of a data set is, and you look in the properties and 1 comma 1 doesn't make any sense to you and you aren't sure what the units are, know that you can just zoom in on your data set and go ahead and measure. So this is saying on the ground each cell is representing a 1 by 1 meter uh, area of land, a 1 square meter area on the ground. But what's the elevation here? To figure that out, we can use the Identify tool. And this is a great way to kind of test yourself and, and make sure these make sense. But if I click on the Identify tool, 
and uh, click in a cell, it brings up the window, but then you have to reset the window. So right now it's pulling the value from the topmost layer because I only have one. But know that you can select all visible layers, all selectable layers, or just simply all layers. And so then if you click in a cell again, it's going to give you the information that's stored at that location. If you had vector data here, like a road, it would just stack all the information. Um, if you drill down at this location on the map, all the data you have that overlaps this area is going to be listed here. So in our case, the stretched value 116 doesn't really make sense because it's not in our range of values for elevation, but the pixel value is. 1386 falls right in here. It's at the low end. So this would be a low um, elevation in our, in our stretch of values here. Um, what the stretched value is referring to is that every color ramp is divided into 255 bins, basically, like little compartments. And then it'll split the range of values into 255 and then bundle them up. So um, the range of elevations that fit into bin 122 are being given this color. Here's uh, This color is bin 116, so it's a lower um, elevation and a lower color on the ramp. Uh, there may be multiple elevations that fit into each color bin, but that's what the stretched value is. It's always going to be between 0 and 254. Pixel value, in our case, is the elevation. The pixel value, if this were a slope data set, would be a range of values if it's in degrees between 0 and 90, and so that should make sense. So the pixel value is the value being stored in the pixel. The pixel is 1 by 1 meters on the ground, and this is the elevation for that average area. Um, so if I zoom out a little bit and kind of click across here, this is a river, so we'd expect these to be our lowest elevations. So we're at 1306, and as I march up this hill, 1310, 1319, 1341, 1361, 1390, all the way up to the white, 1540, 1560. So our elevations are increasing as we go up this slope. That's basically um, how rasters work. Um, as you get a bigger cell, you get more averaging over a bigger space. That's a decrease in resolution, um, increase in coarseness, and that's that. So this lab is all about exploring these kinds of things. Look, at, you can see there's a dam right here. Pretty neat. All right, that's it. If you have questions, let me know. Thanks.